Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Today, I think it's time for that mid-year freakout tag, but I'm gonna use it like as a loose guideline just to give you guys an update of how I've been, what's going on. So we're midway through the year. I have read 44 books. My goal was to read 52. So we're doing fine. Um, I read 92 books last year and I didn't really want to give myself a really hard and fast number to hit. I wanted to enjoy, and I think you guys have seen it recently, like May, my June wrap up that's coming soon. I've just been enjoying reading a little bit more fiction. Obviously I still have all my nonfiction. That's what the focus of this channel is always going to be. But I wanted to give myself almost like summer vacation. It's been a hard first six months, as you guys know. So I wanted to give myself summer. I kind of, it reminds me of Rosie, um, Rosie's TBR possibilities. Um, I still have arcs that I would like to get to for publishers, obviously, and there's other like read-alongs I've committed to, but I would love to just enjoy myself more. Uh, there's been some really good reads so far this year. Um, I've really loved The Monk of Mocha. Um, Crying in H Mart was phenomenal. I have Anthony Bourdain's World Traveler that I'm slowly making my way through. And then there are books that weren't that great. Like I read Gluten is My Bitch, um, which was funny, but it was published before like the internet explosion of Instagram and finding influencers who could cook gluten free. So a lot of this seems very common knowledge at this point. And the books that I don't like, I will unhaul quite obviously. Um, a new release that you haven't read but you want to, oh my gosh, I had a whole first quarter TBR of new releases I was excited for. Um, I've had tons of new authors and tons of, oh hello, my friend's dog's here and she's sitting right outside the door, hello, easily distracted by something cute. Um, also, so outside of reading, we're halfway th through the Read It and Eat subscription box program and like it's been a really big year for me with growth. I've officially paid for like advertising for the first time with the local community. I've been working with influencers for the first time. Uh, a couple of them you'll recognize here on YouTube. Um, I've uh, gotten ready. A lot of us this morning, sorry guys. I have gotten prepared for um, the fall and winter boxes. You guys saw in a vlog, um, I have a new design, a new smaller, more compact box. It's better for the environment. I picked out all the books for 20, the rest of 2021 and 2022, um, and I'm really, really excited. And I think more and more I'm streamlining, I'm learning how to have better margins, but I'm also learning and building a community, which has been really exciting for me. The same thing with booktube one of my biggest goals this year was to collaborate a lot more and now i have a food posse on instagram and the feasting females and we have a readathon coming at the end of summer in august it's just been a lot of fun okay sorry i have no idea where i left off my um old college my old yeah my old graduate school college roommates here with his dog and he went to go take a shower and is just this dog this poor dog is so pro is just crying she's so needy it's so cute she's fine though she just laid down new releases you haven't read and you want to and what am i looking forward to in the second half of the year Ooh, there's lots of good books coming out this year there is another anthony bourdain book that's written from the perspective of his longtime producer from parts unknown that i'm super super excited for i just grabbed came from the publisher, Billion Dollar Fish by Kevin M. Bailey that I'm excited to get to. I actually, um, The Lost Orchard by Raymond Blanc was another pre-order that came. And I'm also excited for books like Hana Khan Carries On. I've really enjoyed this fiction slash romance genre that involves food. Um, it's a lot of fun to read. I have way, obviously way too many books to read and not enough time, but that's okay. I also have Rosalie Palmer Takes the Cake by Alexis Hall, um, who's the author of Boyfriend Material. And I also have The Kitchen Front by Jennifer Weiner. Other new releases and things that are still coming, I quite literally um, just came to market a couple days ago, is Flamin' Hot, the memoir of the, the creator of Flaming Hot Cheetos. Now I know there's a lot of controversy 
around whether or not he actually created it. Don't come at me. I need to read the book and actually understand what talking points he has. Um, Stanley Tucci's memoir comes out later this year. Also very excited. So I think at this point, um, I'm probably down to like four or five pre-orders and then the rest are just books I'm getting from publishers or that I'm interested in. Like I still have to read Unvarnished, which is the winter book for the Read and Eight description box. I still have to read The Sugar Season, which is for the maple box in the fall. So there's tons of things I'm kind of picking and choosing. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to give myself the grace of there's definitely books I have to read. But I also want to give myself some flex to not feel pressure to read an exorbitant amount of books. I've been enjoying, I've been enjoying fiction books as audiobooks, um, but I've been reading my nonfiction, which I think is an important distinction because I think in the past six months, some of my lower rated audiobooks that have been nonfiction, I've said in retrospect, I wish I had read this. So that balance seems to really be working and it makes me super happy. Also on Scribd, a lot of these fiction books are already there. Um, much more, rephrase, apologies. It's much more, it's a lot easier to find fiction books on Scribd that are available versus maybe some of the super niche books that I'm reading. So I know that on Scribd, I have The Rib King, um, A Faux Love Story, Tweet Cute, The Joy Luck Club. Like there's a lot of books already available. The, Cure, the Coincidence of Coconut Cake, so I'm excited to find a better balance and a better rhythm between audiobooks and physical books for the latter half of this year. One of the most beautiful covers I've bought so far this year, I actually would have to say is, Carolyn Phillips is an, is an illustrator in her own right, which is probably why this cover is phenomenal. I'm very excited. This is a complete cover buy. I was walking through Barnes and Nobles and I have my, I'm sure everyone does, but do you have like your path that you go through in the bookstore? I do. Um, I go through, when I walk in my Barnes and Nobles, right to the right is new releases and I'll do new fiction. Usually I'm just snapping pictures. I'm not someone who is so impulsive to buy new fiction, but I am with new nonfiction, obviously. I run that loop and then I go behind that bookshelf to do new nonfiction. And this just happened to be sticking out. It wasn't on my radar at all. And it's part memoir of a life in Taiwan, part love story, a beautiful account of China's brilliant cuisine with recipes. Um, in her author picture, she's, it's, you're not gonna probably see it from here, but she's holding a bunny, which makes me love her even more. Once I finish in the new section of Barnes and Nobles, I then go to science and environmental writing because I found that a lot of books um, that I would consider food writing or have have impact to the food world like supply chains are now intersecting with the foods the environmental section i'm not sure how they decide where books get slotted in bookstores so now i started to go over there and then i will loop to the romance section because there are some food romance books i'm excited for like rosaline parker rosaline palmer takes the cake excuse me i found over there i'll loop through fiction and then I'll circle back around. I'll see what's on those tables for like summer reads. Like I got the summer job. Um, and this is about a friend impersonating her best friend who's a sommelier and she has no idea what she's doing. And then I will go to the diet section. Um, diet books. I hate the section in general. I hate that it's called diet books, but that section now is starting to talk about the impact of food and the environment on your body. So like a nonfiction book that was over there is the Monsanto Papers. If you don't know about Monsanto, they're a huge corporation that owns genetically modified seeds. And it's, they're essentially the reason that most farmers are in perpetual debt in the United States and commit suicide. It's a whole other discussion. And for some reason that showed up in the health and wellness section because the author of the book is, the, the case and the point of the book, the author of the book is suing Monsanto because he has cancer and he believes it's from using Roundup and chemicals that Monsanto uses for their GMO seeds. So I've got to, I got to scope through that section and then I end in the traditional food writing section because it's only about two shelves in Barnes and Nobles, which is this Barnes and Nobles has more food writing books than any other Barnes and Nobles I've been in. That doesn't say too much, but I have to give credit where credit's due. And that's where I usually finish my trip and Dan's the opposite. Dan beelines it straight to graphic novels. 
science fiction, and then he comes and finds me and he's done. Um, I could take another like half an hour, 45 minutes. And I always look at him and I go, am I taking too long? Am I boring you? He's like, no, it's fine. Like do your thing. I recognize I'm supposed to have a library card. Um, I'm working on it. I found the library closest to me, um, but they haven't opened up yet for in like in-person wandering. So I don't know if uh, there's multiple libraries where I live now and I'm trying to figure out like which is like the central hub, if that makes sense. Like in Chicago, it was easy because there's the Chicago Public Library and it takes up like two and a half city blocks. Easy. Um, where I am now, I'm out in like the suburbs and there's lots of pocket libraries and they're all very small looking. So I really, uh, you know, I gotta go. I will go. I will go. I just, they're not open for browsing and etc. So I'm a little hesitant to try and commit to a library card. Not that a library card's a lot of money or anything like that. It's just, I don't know the rules. Like what if I commit to a library and then I don't like that library? Am I able to go to like a different library? Can you have more than one library card? You'd think I'd know this because I worked at a library for six years. Like all through high school, I worked at a library. And then I would come back in the summertime as a like an undergrad and they would still take me back and give me hours for like the first two years. And then something stupid happened and I was not renewed and it's fine. Um, so anyway, that is my mid-year freak out book tag. There's a couple, um, there's a couple questions in here, like who's your favorite character, your new fictional crush? Like I'm a boring 30 something who's married, so I don't really have fictional crushes anymore. I did find the protagonist of 800 Grapes absolutely ridiculous. I did not like her. I did not find her like a bull. I found her very self-absorbed. Um, so like that would go on like the negative list, I guess. Uh. So what's, what's, what are my goals for the second half of this year? Um, continue reading, continue to show you guys more behind the scenes of read it and eat, show you guys some of the partners I'm working with. I actually signed up for screen printing classes, which is super excited. I've become a local sponsor to a book fair or my brand like read it and eat has bookmarks and breadsticks has. So I'm really excited to get more involved in my community. We have a readathon coming in August. Um, the Feasting Females host book buffet, a readathon. Just keep an eye out for those. Lots of videos are coming this summer in July and August to get everyone jazzed up and I'm very excited. And I think, oh, I have a new series coming that I'm working on. It's called R&D, where I'm going to be reading a book in the nonfiction space, a special topic about a specific food, and then trying tasting, trying and learning more about it physically. So it's not cookbooks, but it's like, if I'm reading a book on fermentation, I might be buying a fermentation kit from a small business and really going through the experience with you guys and seeing what I think. It kind of reminds me of Brad's series on Bon Appetit. Um, oh my gosh. What is his show called? It's Alive. His series is called It's Alive. There we go. So yeah, that's everything in my mid-year freak out check-in chat. I really wouldn't even, wouldn't even call it a tag. Obviously, I will link the original creator of the tag in the comments below. Don't forget you can sign up for my Patreon. $3 a month will get you a toasty mascot sticker. And I also think that's where I'm going to start keeping polls for what fiction book you guys want me to see. I have tons of, I actually have a backlog of fiction books on my shelves. And I want you guys to be able to choose what I'm going to read next and you guys will have access to those blog vlogs and reviews before anybody else. I also have started vlogging a lot more and I think it's cause it's summer and I'm relaxing. You get to see those vlogs a whole five days in advance. There's also higher tiers and the higher tiers will get you basically locked into the read it in eat box subscription program. Um, the second tier gets you two boxes a year and the third tier gets you four boxes a year. If you haven't already, I would love for you to hit like and subscribe. And if you're looking for me elsewhere on the internet, you can find some of my blog posts at booksandbread.com. You can find me on Instagram at bookmarksandbreadsticks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.